eat your backyard. It's a live stream this morning. Hope everybody's doing okay. I continue to uh, enjoy this experiment I've started here with growing 50 pots worth of plants. As you can see, it's looking pretty good. All right, so let's get some advertising out of the way. If you're new to Eat Your Backyard, this is a channel where I talk about lots of things that I'm into, like different kinds of plants. And uh, this is a corner of my yard where I started a series called What You Got Growing On. And it's coming along pretty well. I've just been planting things from seeds and cuttings and letting them grow. Later today, I'm going to be live streaming about growing starfruit trees. That's 11 Eastern time if you are available. Yesterday we planted some cool things that are still looking good. We planted this areca. These arecas and they, they look nice and green. Hey, yeah, thanks for joining in. I appreciate it. Looks like it's just you and me to start. That's nice too. <laughs> So, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you're new or current to the channel, please turn on your notifications so you'll be notified as I stream like this, if you might be interested in these kind of things. So, today's not really about the grow table so much as it is the new grow table, which will go here, which is a extremely ratty part of my yard which has been needing a remedy for a while this was the remnants of a lemonade stand sign that i have some attachment to but it's obviously not gonna work so the amazing thing was this is the top of an old desk and uh you can see maybe I just drilled it on there with with a screw or whatever, but it's standed stood. Sorry, the test of time. All right, gigantic timber bamboo. I keep that one just because you never know when you're going to need a good piece of timber bamboo. I hate to be a hoarder of bamboo stalks, and that's something I definitely have in me is to hoard bamboo stalks. At one point, this table here was had two levels of just packed in sea breeze bamboo canes that I had cured in here and really the question then becomes what do you do with a hundred cured sea breeze bamboo canes and I did a few things with them I built a bamboo bridge for my kids in the back over back by our fort <laughs> I also built some bamboo ladders yeah. Hey, Somali Flame. Yeah, I'm glad you caught this one. It's cool you're interested in these things also. Glad we're on the same frequency. That's cool. Yeah, so anyway, right away, just by removing that, that, you know, lemonade stand sign of the future. And by the way, it's not a lemonade stand sign until it actually says lemonade for sale on it. So that's really the next step. But I got to get it out of here because I'm I'm out of spots to plant more more things here. And let's see how many I have. I've got, you know, basically three this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, twelve that way. So you, you could guess about 36 pots, which means I would have 24 more to go. No, 14 more to go. Yeah, 24. 14. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, I, the math, not my strong suit. Because I'm thinking about what I'm going to build here. I think I'm going to just simply place, I'm going to use this existing 4x4. And these are old broken pieces of fence panels from over the years. This is my recycle area. I'm just going to put another 4x4 here, another 4x4 here. 
maybe put one up against the back fence there and then run a two by four this way and a two by four this way and then one in and I'll have a nice little frame. And then I'm just gonna continue with this method I've used here, which was just to use regular old fence slats. You know, it's the exact same thing of what's what's on the fence here. It's just, you go buy them at the store. And all I did was hammer in a nail there and hammer in a nail on the other end. And then it was perfectly wide enough to, to grow these. So it makes like just a super inexpensive way to grow these. The old two by four scraps you got laying around in the garage maybe or whatever. Yeah, so I have more of these pots. I bought 50 of them. I might go more than that now that I'm getting really good at counting pots. <laughs> Apparently not. Yeah, 14 more plants I can put here. I think I can space that in pretty well if I go three deep, yeah. Three by five. It'd actually be a small place, but I'm going to try to use this whole space. So let's look to see what else is here. So I live about, if you go that way, if you hit the Atlantic Ocean in about five blocks, four or five blocks, something like that. So we have things like crab traps hanging on our fence. You know, actually hanging kind of crooked. I'm going to have to probably relocate those crab traps, although I do like the look of them now that the lemonade stand sign that never was is removed and there's a very old epoxy one of the original epoxy surfboards really now they're very commonplace but back in the day they weren't so much rainbow Doug Wright surfboard manufacturer used to make surfboards right down the street that's a beauty and I just let it age and it ages, it, what happens is the, it, the fiberglass ends up getting really gnarly on this edge here. And uh, so it becomes a thing you don't really want to touch. It's like I call them cactus boards, just because if you rub against them, it gets in your skin. But they look cool. And you can, I could always spray a coat of lacquer on it or something to seal it up. But I like that it's got, still got wax on it from the last surf session with sand rubbed into it and dirt and it's perfect. So, all right, look look at what we have here. Another gigantic piece of bamboo. Now this one is starting to rot in certain spots. I don't know why, I always keep it. When it starts to do that, really it's got, you know, verified bug holes in it. It's really the point to throw it out. Okay, we're putting that, we're throwing it out. We can't tolerate verified bug holes. And by the way, that is the perfect name for my next band. Uh, we got a little spider action happening here. There he goes, Mr. Banana Spider. We'll, we'll just kind of wrap him up in there. And, yeah. Okay. So what do we have here? Well, there's some decent things still growing there. Yesterday in the stream, I planted a couple of things. Yeah, I planted uh, this dwarf Chevalera here. You can see. It's amazing though, really, when you plant stuff like dwarf chevalera in this very sandy soil. Might be interested to see what's beneath the uh, undercarriage of sea grape leaves. Look at the look at these sea grape leaves. Too, they're they're just gigantic and they stay pretty solid, but they eventually start to break down. Yeah, it's pretty rich organic stuff here. There's a, yeah, this isn't too bad, but very very loose soil you know, the, the soil you're growing in makes such a difference but for cuttings this area of central florida is just perfect especially this time of year it gets a little cooler yeah i surf all over the place but primarily satellite beach good question yeah so i planted those chefalera There's the Song of India that I planted with this beautiful Song of India mulch. You know, not everybody has Song of India mulch, but if you've got it, you know what I'm talking about. What is my favorite palm? All right, I gotta think about this. I don't wanna answer that one. 
just too quickly. Yeah. There. Look at that perfect mosquito. Got this sugar cane, old sugar cane. I need to get rid of. Okay. So it's looking much better. So anyway, yesterday I added in. I wanted just a little tropical undercarriage type of look here and in here as well. So, you know, obviously all this will turn brown, the stuff I threw the leaves. Oh, nice, Merritt Island, yeah. Merritt Island, the beauty of Merritt Island, especially the southern tip of Merritt Island, tropical trail area is, is exquisite. I should go for like a walk along there, do a stream. I'm learning where I have good connection with this phone. I'm also thinking maybe I need to get a better phone. This is a Galaxy S8. Looking at other ones, but anyway, we'll see. All right, so obviously this crab trap will have to go. I might find a way to affix that surfboard along this area here and put those two crab traps stacked vertically right here, here and here. Or make this my shovel area. I'll, I'll make that a shovel rack. And the crab traps will have to TBD. But I do like them there. We've caught a crab or two in those. I'm going to have to add something in here. Here's a little update on something I've got going on. You know what that is? That is the thornless uh, blackberry. I almost said mulberry. Thornless blackberry. Which I, I almost killed by being in a dry part of my yard and letting it get completely bone dry. That's why all of these, le these leaves here are burned. But you can see it's growing back. So it's a forgiving plant. And I should actually probably trim it back just to encourage it getting a little bit more bushy. But I planted one there and then I planted one over to the side in a very kind of shade spot. But we'll see how it does behind the thing. That one also got killed back and still has some hope. I'll give it the fish. It should go. So yeah, I'll probably put some things in. Just some plants around the bottom here. It'd be cool if it was something edible. Maybe I'll put in some cactus. Some dragon fruit. Yeah, that would actually be pretty good. Because if I put in dragon fruit, oh, what I could do is put in a bunch along the, the back, different types, and then grow it up, kind of trellis it up and over. Yeah, maybe even have a little dragon fruit droop. I like that. All right, well, this corner of the yard is shaping up. Yeah, this was, if you look back in videos of I don't know how many years ago, but over the years, this area of my yard was has gone through many transitions. And I always look at all of my yard as like a canvas to paint in. But uh, I decided to transition the whole side, south side of my yard into an edible wall. So just to go through it real quickly, Cavendish banana. Well, first of all, edible. Well, I don't know if you have, I guess we have to start just on this wall. So I'll just count the, the cactus the edible pad cactus. Oops, my finger's making it go blurry. The Cavendish banana, dwarf bananas. That's a Dracaena fragrance. Took a cutting off of that yesterday, that's on the table. Uh, this is the papaya. I actually transplanted a gigantic, a gigantic papaya to go there. The Musa banana tree. Uh, then sugar cane. This is green Florida sugar cane, green chewing cane. You can see this time of year. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah, you, know, you can see the sugars start to turn red in the canes. You can also see like, mm, let's see. Yeah, you, you can. You can see the little roots, fresh roots growing out. This is the perfect time. See that it, little roots growing out from the the dead sheath or whatever. That is the perfect time to plant them for cuttings. One of the things I'm considering, you should let me know in the comments for sure, is to start my backyard sugarcane grove again. That was very fun when I did it before. I had five varieties of sugarcane and I just sell them on uh, Amazon. I'm thinking about doing that again. I just have to acquire many varieties again, which is fun, but they grow so easily. Like this time of year to plant them in Florida, 
yeah, you can, especially here, they just grow so well in this loose sandy soil. That's why it, it makes the perfect sugarcane forest. And really you don't, they don't want to be fertilized. So they're just a low maintenance, low hassle crop. I think you just throw compost back there. The sugarcane patch would do pretty well. Uh, I had a red, a purple, a green, a striped. Yeah, and, and one that was more or less a dark green. Does sugarcane like the hot sun? Does sushi like rice? Indeed it does. Indeed it does. It loves the hot sun. In fact, where sugarcane's gonna be the most comfortable, you and I are gonna be the least comfortable. Is, is my claim. Uh, if you've ever been to Lake Okeechobee, it is the whole from the bottom of Lake Okeechobee south. It's just nothing but sugarcane. I don't know what you call them, farms. Nothing but. It's really actually kind of depressing, in a way. But um, anyway, the plant is cool. It's just maybe uh, so many of them. My point is that, yeah, those fields I've often looked out because I go back because I go bass fishing in Lake Okeechobee sometimes I looked out over those fields and thought, oh, anybody that has to go into those fields and deal with that crop on an ongoing basis is should probably get a medal for <laughs> to produce the sugar. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I'm thinking of putting a, my own little sugarcane plantation, forest, whatever farm back here again and this time making it a little bit more elaborate and far more pleasant than the sprawling never-ending seemingly uh, groves of South Florida you have dwarf purple La France has dwarf purple Wow all right we might have to do some trading of uh, sugarcane cuttings La France if you're into it don't want to pressure you or anything but I just want to pressure you a little just enough to get a dwarf purple sugar cane cutting yeah well it's prime pickings here for getting some green cane cuttings that's for sure look at these look at this healthy oh I hope the phone focuses on it look at that this is the season to grow green sugar cane to grow any sugar cane because you, if you look at the freshness of those roots, look at this one curling around, just seeking, let's see there, seeking the, the solitude of its own planting area. Black sugar cane. <sighs> yeah, okay, same thing, same thing. We should do some cuttings trading, that could be fun. You know, one thing when I, to, these are, perhaps the best sugarcane I think is perhaps the best plant to be able to trans to be able to mail because it is so easy to control the desiccation or the loss of water in the cuttings so cool how this stream has just turned into a master class in sugarcane cuttings not that I'm giving the master class but that we could all can talk about this um, I, they are just rock hard, right? I mean, just, you can hear it, rock hard. And that means, of course, they're, they're already made for transport from that perspective, they're sturdy. But what I would do is cut them. Usually I would cut at least two nodes. You know, you find the healthy, make sure they get a healthy bud on them and, and cut two nodes. And then I'd just use paraffin wax, or you could just, uh, sometimes I'd use just old kid, my kid's crayons and melt them. Hey, Hindu from India. Welcome, man. Welcome. That's so cool. Yeah, you know, what's interesting. Um, stoked to have India in the house. Uh, what's interesting is the viewers on Eat Your Backyard, now it's American viewers were like 40% and Indian viewers were way over 20%. It was interesting to see that. It's kind of cool. Australia too. You know, growing these types of plants, I think, really is the idea that we're all in a kind of a community of a fellowship of growing, so to speak, things which are super cool and tasty. And a lot of the things which could be 
maybe common in a place like India or Africa or you know a lot or even southern Europe you know temperate areas uh, yeah a lot of those things which are common in your area are novel in my area and vice versa which I think is so cool but anyway so just to get we got stalled on the sugar cane but I think I'm it's good that we did uh, is to dip the ends in, in the uh, just some warmed up paraffin wax or crayon wax and if you do that you can transport them very easily and then there's really no reason why all of us shouldn't have five varieties of sugar cane in our backyard <laughs> That's where the rabbit hole leads. Oh yeah, the papaya trees video. You came across that one? Yeah, which I've got so many of them. One that's super popular is the how to tell female from male papaya video. That's been a popular one. That was one I learned and tried to pass on a little bit of knowledge on that. Yeah, and you know, the short story, the quickie on telling female papaya from male papaya tree. It's funny, my son Jack is in school. They're learning about, you know, uh, male, female, the sex of plants and fruit and so on in his uh, elementary school. And it's a cool thing that we all learn about. Papaya ha has the small singular flowers on the base. That's a female. And as a matter of fact, my neighbor has, I noticed, I'm not sure if they know. Uh, has a male papaya, and you can see. Yeah, if you see that papaya, it's just like a, a multiple flower deal. Anyway, so this wall, to get back to the original thought, I wanted to make it all edible, so we had two types of bananas, the sugar cane, this is soft petaled yucca, which I do I've done a fair amount of videos on. Uh, unlike Spanish bayonet, you know, uh, you can. I like to do this demo. You can get spiked with it, and it won't hurt you. If you do that on a Spanish bayonet, you're done, son. It's gonna hurt a lot, and potentially the sticker break off under the skin. That's the that's the classic moment, but. This plant, the soft petaled yucca, produces white petals which are edible and taste something like an almond in a weirdish way. So anyway, that one counts, that counts. I like it when it's more of a novel type of edible too, that's fun. And then this one you might notice is one of the world's most uh, weak looking hibiscus bushes ever grown, but it's just in between in between flowering cycles i just don't give it much fertilizer that's why it looks like this but it's also you know being overwhelmed by the sugar cane which is never going to relent but you can actually eat the petals of the hibiscus flower and the red hibiscus is one i have to do a demonstration video on that eat a red hibiscus flower if there was one there i'd do it right now but there aren't and there are no petals on the top of the yucca you can see the the dead flower stems from the last petals. What is a katuk? K-A-T-U-K. I don't know what that is. I'd like to know. Okay, so as we continue down, the hibiscus edible, yucca edible, sea grapes, the beautiful sea grape. The golden cane palm, oh yeah. Yeah, PTSD from thinning it. Yeah, it's traumatic. It's traumatic. I've had some some notable injuries from plants. That's why I have very few plants that I uh, allow in my yard that are, will injure me. One is right behind me as I almost stick my head into it walking backwards. Uh, it is the lemon tree. Look at that. Ooh, that's the gift that keeps on giving. Then it breaks off. Then it lays there and waits for a foot. You know how deep that will go into your heel? <laughs> so you gotta be somewhat, I just break them off into very small pieces. That way they don't have the leveraging power, but you know, 
Here's another one. It's got two chances to lose. Yeah. Anyway, so the sea grape, and then that's really where it ends. So something edible to continue on for the length of the fence is really the right play here. Maybe based on this live stream, just saying, LaFrance, some dwarf purple and some black sugar cane. But we'd still go with the dragon fruit in addition to the sugar cane. So maybe that's what I'll do. Anyway, I got a, I've got a good way ahead on expanding the grow table. That was the primary purpose of this stream, was to kind of share the experience with everybody. Okay, so Katuk, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Katuk is an edible tropical plant. Tastes like peanuts. That's cool. Oh, I'm going to research that one. I appreciate you pointing that out. It's very interesting. Hmm. be interesting to know in the comments, people watching this video, uh, let us know if you've got one or grow one or, or know more about it, how to get them. Okay. Yeah, Daniela. Waterhawk. I appreciate it very, very much. That'd be cool. Yeah, we be easy enough. You know, you, the sugar cane is like you can just throw in an envelope. If you just seal up the ends with wax or whatever, you don't even need to wrap it up, really. Throw a napkin around it or something. Oh, yeah. Indo, you're in an apartment, so you don't have that nice big backyard. Yeah, this is a quarter acre lot, which is more than enough for my, my purposes. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm very grateful to be here right now in this immediate moment in this place with all of you but yeah this yard was uh, actually nothing but grass when I moved in it was just grass and there was an elm tree here little a mini winged elm they call them but anyway a very small tree an orange tree in that corner beautiful navel orange tree which produced crazy good navel oranges I killed it with spider spray with wasp spray got on it Ugh, tragic anyway all the rest, what, and a flowering bush in the corner. There was a bogavino along the side. I completely transformed this yard many times, so hurricanes have transformed it for me, but this amount of space has served as just the right amount for me. I don't really need much more. I'm just far enough away from the ocean that the salt spray isn't too bad, and as you can see, I've got a low undercarriage and a fruit canopy situation going along the, the eastern side of the yard and and uh, but i leave enough for grass because we do a lot of football throwing and soccer ball kicking how old are these trees Indu? they are most of them yeah so i started on the journey to create my fruit forest about 20 over 20 years ago yeah over probably more like 23 years ago and so it depends that hayden mango which is gigantic that one's one of the oldie oldies that was one of the first ones i put in here so that one's about 20 years old i'd say this this tommy atkins which is smaller mango tree is uh maybe 15. some of these over here are range from 15 uh to 10 years old yep uh one of the things though is that i don't allow them to get taller you know, I, I manage the height. So I manage them both to where they're all at a pickable height. That's important. I try to thin out the big, developed a hatred of grass. Yeah, it's understandable. I don't have a, I don't love grass, but I mean, I love to plant something soft. You, these mango trees start to get really heavy woody. They, I bought all these mango trees from a nursery and they all came grafted. You can actually still see you know, generally where it was grafted at the base of it, even though it's fairly old. Yeah. Uh, I actually just planted two mango trees in the collection to, from seeds. Now, that was in a stream I did yesterday. I planted these if you want to check it out. You can see it, look back at it. 
But uh, these are two pits that I just threw back into the heap and uh, they, they grew. I transplanted them to these pots, which were what the blackberries came in. And uh, yeah, so the thing is positioning them enough so that you achieve what you want where you want. And it's a fun thing to do. And I, so I trim a lot, but I keep the height down. I try to take out big woody branches. I try to do things like they would do in fruit groves a little bit. Uh, this Edward mango has struggled, even though it's not that much older, younger than this Tommy Atkins. It's just struggled through the salty irrigation on the leaves. But now it's getting tall enough, so that's an Edward mango. So yeah, three mango trees, and I've got a loquat tree over here to the left, which is very closely related to the lychee, but not as salt intolerant. Some cherry trees throughout here, some mul very tired mulberry. I'm going to do a live stream on completely revamping this mulberry tree. Um, yeah, because I need to trim it way back, give it some tasty fish emulsion around the base, maybe a little bit of granular fertilizer just lightly, and stoke it up to produce and, and show how quickly you can turn on the lights with a mulberry tree or a fruit tree if you really want to. This one's gotten kind of tired. You can see with the background of the sky, it's just kind of not really doing it. But it, it's also the time of the year that trees drop their leaves, but in Florida, this is an ever-bearing tree, so it'll drop them, but it can also come back super strong with the right steps. It will it gives fruit year-round if you're doing it right. You can easily have year-round mulberries. Check this out. Here's the mulberry from the live stream I did a couple weeks ago. And here's what I'm talking about. Four cuttings planted, four cuttings growing. You know, how hard is it to start your own fruit forest? Uh, as a type of plant like a mulberry tree or knowing somebody or whatever and just say you know can i get a grab some cuttings you know if you got one branch you could do this four trees and then before you know it you have this but i'm going to be adding some more to this corner of my yard i've had many things in this corner i had nectarine tree i actually had an ein shamir apple tree which is a type of israeli hot weather apple tree in this corner i've had uh yeah, several other things here, but now it's time for something new. Yeah, the miniature coconut, I, I want to do, well, good question, LaFrance. Yeah, I'd like to do uh, three dwarf coconuts along my curb in the front. Yep, just because that's kind of the place where that, I think they'd be least, are able to spread out the most, but yeah, least kind of in the way. If I put a, man, if I put a coconut tree here it's just going to dominate this whole area even the even the malaysian it would just take it over and the fronds just go out so far in all directions it's too much but i think what will go nice here is going to be a well manicured grapefruit tree and uh, i love grapefruits not you know anybody who's owned a grapefruit tree knows there is a number of grapefruits which is too many and um they, they're strong producers, but I'm going to try to get a, like a cool variety. I think you can get the blood red, you know, grapefruits. I know the ruby reds are, are really good. But anyway, I'm going to put a grapefruit tree in there to start. And I wonder, this is kind of like the one gap. You know, we got hurricane, tropical storm, hurricane, I don't know what it is, uh, Ada coming in, which is why it's so windy. Um, this is the one gap where that salt wind can come through, but it hasn't seemed, you know, shreds the banana leaves, but it hasn't seemed to really um, damage it too much. Once I get citrus here, they're real moody with the salt spray, so, and I mean, if, you, if you're not living on the ocean, this might be a strange concept, but the salt spray is so that you can see it moving through the air. If you're at the beach, you just see a continuous spray and mist of salt and it gets on everything and that's why everything that I have metal in my yard rusts I mean just immediately but um but it gets on all the plants too which most of them can handle it a little bit but not the direct assault especially when it's you know like today it last few days it'll be 10 to 25 10 to 30 mile an hour winds with that salt spray in it for for days and days and days Yeah, I'm going to have to be careful with the placing for sure of where I would place that.
coconuts and where I'm going to place the grapefruit because I want it to fit in and I don't want it also to shade out anything. One of the things that I've got here to the, oops, yeah, if I put my finger there, it blurs it. Uh, one of the things that I'm doing here is also reducing the, reducing the wood inside this. So I, I did some pretty heavy cuts to try to reduce it. But what you don't want, I think, are these really big woody things. If you can reduce that, the more the better. And you also open up the canopy for a lot more branches and fruit to happen. So I've been doing that. You can see I just kind of created a hole in the middle. That's why it looks like that. And it's achieved the, first of all, allowing a little bit of the grass to re regrow, but uh, it's achieved the result of having the inner branches grow up and then I'll trim the other one down good uh, if you look at this chocolate pudding tree going around the cherry trees if you look at the chocolate pudding tree this one had been just over the years twisted into a weird representation of a tree real branchy tall I brought it down more than halfway of its height and uh, here we go see if I can get the camera to over saturating try to go this way yeah anyway hopefully you can see you know, it came back very bushy as a result of topping it. No fruit, and I did have to sacrifice the fruit. I bet you if I looked around in here, I would see little fruit that's already set. It's just real small. This is, yeah, black sapote, chocolate pudding tree. I don't see any fruit. Yeah. Well, okay, I think I'm going to stop this stream. But thanks, everybody, for joining on. I appreciate it. I'm going to be back on at 11 to do the growing starfruit stream. Hopefully I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Eat your backyard. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the links if you want to support the channel. Any of the Amazon links, if you click on those, and then anything you purchase goes towards the channel, but it doesn't does not cost you more. All right. Thanks for watching. Eat your backyard.